Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our EDC coffee chat. Uh, this morning, we're not honored to have me on as a guest. Uh, I'm get, just going to be talking about uh, our program, the Olympic Peninsula <laughs> Small <laughs> Business. <laughs> All right, um, and uh, so I appreciate everyone joining us and a few housekeeping items before we kick this off. Uh, first of all, if you'll place yourself on mute or I will help you out with that. Um, and just so we don't inadvertently pick up any background noise. And, um, and then also, if you have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll make this really interactive. I do have a PowerPoint presentation um, and I will go through the program with you. Um, we applied for uh, the Small Business Innovation Fund that uh, came from federal funding to the State Department of Commerce. And they notified us I think in November, and um, and then we, you know, tried to get out the program is right away. So, because we have to spend all the money by June first, which is going to be a huge uphill um, climb. And so, with that, I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, there we go. And again, um, I didn't spend a ton of time making this slideshow um, uh, incredibly pretty. I didn't have a marketing expert helping me. So uh, it's just, just the facts. Um, so here are our partners for the Olympic Peninsula Business Boost. Um, it's EDC Team Jefferson. So our counterparts in Clallam and Jefferson, no, in Jefferson and Grays Harbor counties. So EDC Team Jefferson, Greater Grays Harbor Inc., which is the EDC in Grays Harbor, Peninsula College and Grays Harbor College. And then of course, Clallam EDC, and we were the prime applicant. Um, so we are, we did receive 1.306 million is the contracted amount that has not yet been signed. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk getting this going, but we've got such a short deadline that I felt like we needed to move forward on it. Um, and uh, so the air, the service area for this program is Clallam County, Jefferson County and Grays Harbor County. And the intention of this grant is to provide free legal marketing and bookkeeping services to underserved businesses in these three county areas. Um, so the, the uh, areas that we are going to support a little more about those areas is legal support to create LLCs, S corps, single and multi-member operating agreements, personal guarantees, offer letters, exit strategy plans, business plan guidance, that kind of thing. Um, there will be a lot of detailed information in the next slide and um, we'll be, we'll be uh, issuing requests for proposals. And this is a delivery-based contract. So it's not an hourly-based contract. So we will be asking the different uh, service providers to share with us what they would charge to help a business go from say a sole proprietorship to an LLC. And what would that one-time fee be rather than it be um, an hourly base. So what we have to turn into the Department of Commerce is here's you know X many businesses that became LLCs and the associated invoice for that is you know, whatever amount per LLC, and then we would get reimbursed for it. And then we pay the service the provider. Service provider. Uh, the next area of support is marketing. Um, so that is in three areas that we identified. One is to create content, brand development, and graphic arts support. Another is videography. And the last is web design. And because, and we, we believe we're only gonna be 
um, offering like a single page website if that's something that a business is requesting. And then uh, the last area is free bookkeeping support. Um, and it's not up to six months of free bookkeeping. It is because we have to have everything completed by June 1st. So it would be basically through May, January through May, that bookkeepers would help these small businesses get their um, financials set up and into QuickBooks. So from January through, um, through May. And also the businesses would receive a one-year license for QuickBooks and security um, software and Microsoft Office. Colleen, excuse yep. me, but yes. are you are these on your slides? Because all <coughs> I'm seeing, and I don't know about everybody else, is your first slide. Really? Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. Let me try again. Everybody else was only seeing my first slide. Okay. Let's try again. Um. Uh, let's see. Share. Share. What do you guys see now? Do you see the where it says free services to small business? No, it just says, oh, there you go. There you go. Huh. Okay. That looks yeah. good, Colleen. Okay. So it keeps on saying Zoom quit unexpectedly. So, okay. So that's first slide you're seeing. And then this is the slide with the map. Do you see that? No, just it's your lead slide. It's back oh. up. Okay, thank you. Hey, Colleen, why don't you send the PowerPoint to Lori or to me and we can share it? Yeah. Huh. I will try sharing one more time and see. Um, if this one, I'm gonna try to. Okay, what do you see now? Map. Map. Okay, so there, I think we got it now. So this no, was it went back. No. Okay, now this is the first slide, and then yes. here is the second slide, the map. Yes. So the coverage yes. area. Okay, and um, thank you. No, that you guys weren't. It keeps on saying Zoom quit unexpectedly. So, oh, uh, uh, if you're not, so I'm going to the next slide, and uh, free services. Do you see that? No. 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 Okay. Is the slide deck in the file, uh, Colleen? Looks like Colleen is frozen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thanks everybody for your patience. Um, yes. I know this is Rebecca. I know Colleen won't mention this. Um, but she wrote this grant and it was the top rated grant that Department of Commerce wrote. So she get she should get lots of kudos for mm -hmm. submitting the, the highest scoring grant for the state. If she went to the top left of her slide and clicked, sometimes that moves you through to the next slide. I've had that problem in the past. It's worked. I don't know if it would today, though. Let me try again here. Okay. I can you guys see this? Yep. Yes. Okay. Why is it not? Okay. So I'm I'm just gonna keep it in this format just because I don't want to risk it, if that's all right. Um so. This is the service area. So businesses need to be off three counties. Uh, it's saying Zoom. You know what? Um, uh, I will okay. save this to Dropbox. And Lori or Rebecca, can you uh, 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 please 
run I can the grab slide. it. This is annoying. Um, so I apologize, you guys. And okay. Lori? Yes. Or uh, I guess you're there. So um, I am going to make you a co host. Mm -hmm. uh, make co host. Okay. And now I would like you to share screen. Go to um, COVID 19 response. Yes. Small business innovation fund. Yes. And then marketing. Olympic Peninsula OPSBB and right. there should be the version one um, mm -hmm. slide. Okay. And if you'll share that. Okay. Let me get it up. Okay. Let me go to share screen. Can you see it? Yes. You can do, I, you'll probably have no problem. Go from, from beginning. Yeah, okay. So you guys saw this slide, next slide. <laughs> so this is the service area, um, Clallam, Jefferson and Grays Harbor counties. And uh, next slide. So these are the free services that we'll be providing to small rural businesses, free legal support to create things like LLCs, S corps, if someone's an LLC and they're interested in becoming an S corp, single and multi-member operating agreements, personal guarantees, offer letters, exit strategy plans, business plan guidance, that kind of thing. Um, the next is free market, oh, go back, free marketing support. Uh, to create one area is content and brand development. And the next area is videography. And the next is web design. I see Debbie put the question in, what about nonprofits? No, the way the legislature designed this program, it is only for for-profit small businesses. So nonprofits are not um, eligible to apply for this. And it's for underserved so um, our counties, counties three are economically distressed and considered underserved, but we are creating a point system um, and we're targeting certain, especially Hispanic owned businesses on the West End. But uh, again, I'll get into that. I think there's a lot of capacity on the business side so far. Um, free marketing support. Uh, like I said, content and brand development and graphic arts is one area. Another is videography. And the last is web design. And we're anticipating just uh, one page web design because of the limited funding that we have um, to support all the different things. Uh, and the last area is free bookkeeping support. So with up to, and it's not six months, it's uh, just through June. So January through May 31st, bookkeeping services. And uh, those um, businesses, if they need it, uh, would potentially receive a free computer, but they would receive uh, QuickBooks online, security software, and Microsoft Office suite. Um, and that's if that's needed. So next slide. It didn't move, Lori. Okay, thank you. So um, this is delivery-based legal and marketing support services. So this is federal funding and we have to uh, uh, publish formal requests for proposals. And the three EDCs are drafting the RFPs and we're 
in the process of doing that right now. The timeline is that we expect the RFPs to be published next week. The deadline to respond to the RFPs for um, attorneys and um, uh, and then also marketing professionals will be by the end of the year. And the selection committee will, which will be comprised of board members from the three EDCs and executive um, directors of the three EDCs will meet the first week of January. And for the legal and for the marketing program, um, and then we hope to execute the contracts the second week of January, and then services would begin following that. Um, we, I've really heard pretty clearly from the other two EDCs that they want to hire marketing and legal support, um, support entities uh, that are in their own counties. So we've got to see how complex that would be. That would mean like for legal support services, we'd have to have three providers, one in each county, which may make sense um, if, if it's necessary that, um, that uh, the, you need to have one-on-one -on -one meetings and that kind of thing. And certain, certainly with videography, I don't see that someone from, um, from, Jefferson County, Port Townsend is going to be wanting to drive to Aberdeen to do videography um, regularly, especially if it's just you're getting paid, you know, to create a, say, a 90 second video for a business to put on their website or TikTok or something like that. They're, you know, we're not including a lot of travel time, travel um, expense reimbursement. And um, something important for everyone to know is that this will be paid in arrears. We will submit the invoices to the state and we, we do have a little bit of flexibility um, to be able to um, pay as soon as possible, but we also are, you know, we don't have um, enough to cover everyone's uh, invoices and then wait to be reimbursed from the state. So that's something that uh, needs to be considered. Next slide. So we have, we can't just, you know, we couldn't hide, hire Lena as an example to provide free bookkeeping services because um, her, her employees, I did, actually did talk to Lena about this and some other bookkeepers that they don't have capacity. They, you know, already are fully tapped out with all of their existing clients. So what part of our application was, was to also train, um, talking to the colleges, um, they proposed 20 bookkeepers. So initially the thought was 10 on each, um, from each college, um, but Grays Harbor um, covers just Grays Harbor. And um, whereas Peninsula College covers both Jefferson and Clallam County, so that's 110,000 people versus 75. So the colleges will talk about an allocation. And um, I don't know if, I think I saw Rob on here. We've got a meeting tomorrow actually to discuss more details about how this is going to operate. But Brian or Susie, um, do you, I, I don't see Mia on, I know there have been internal conversations about uh, how this will work with um, Grace Harbor College, and I know you guys have an MOU to do that. Um, is there anything you want to add? Um, yeah, the, some of the, one of the classes will be offered starting in January um, at Peninsula College, and one will be offered at Grace, and two will be offered at Grace Harbor, but they're um, all online, so you won't even really know which college you're going to. We're also, given the um, great interest, we're also trying to find ways to infuse some face-to-face -face contact as well, like our fabulous business faculty member, Rob, is interested in just driving down to Aberdeen and giving those students down there some face-to-face -face contact just to really make a, a super meaningful learning environment. Um, but the the front facing to the students should probably be pretty invisible as far as which college they're going to. Terrific. Yeah, so they'll be 
providing courses beginning in January and going through May. Um, and so that's two, two quarters worth of classes, right, Susie? No, just one quarter, three okay. classes, um, bookkeeping, accounting, and I, just, I knew the other one yesterday. Um, <laughs> some, uh, oh, QuickBooks. Okay. Yeah. So, and then we begin to put the students out, the interns out into the field and uh, they will receive technical support from the colleges as they meet with the businesses that we connect them to. Um, and so to help, you know, get, take those box of receipts that a small business would have. And we're looking at just working on uh, 2023 and starting to put those into, um, into QuickBooks and get them set up. And again, they'll have support, technical assistance support from the college to be able to do that. Um, and uh, so those, those bookkeepers, uh, so because we've had such huge demand, which we didn't anticipate, as of today, we have 234, and that's in the next slide, 234 applicants for the bookkeeping program. Um, and we, you know, we didn't even know if we'd have solid 20. So, you know, we were really estimating what might happen and we estimated incorrectly. So, and I checked with Department of Commerce to see if we could increase the uh, amount of award and they said no. So what we, our option is, is to reallocate the funds that they are providing to us. But we are looking at uh, monthly stipends for the students. And um, the intention was a thousand, you know, a thousand or so per month through the period of the grant award. But if they then are starting to make money in April, uh, we and we want to support more than 20 bookkeepers, we may modify that so it's a lower amount beginning in April. Um, and so the students will receive upon, so they'll be issued a, a computer, but upon um, successful completion of the program, May 31st, the, they will get to keep the free computer, laptop computer, which will have a one-year license for QuickBooks, security on it, and Microsoft Office. Um, and when we put them out in the field to connect with the small businesses, they, as a small business owner, as a, um, they will be, you know, we will help them get set up with, uh, as a sole proprietor, and um, they will be being, they will pay, be paid $50 an hour as a 1099 contractor. Uh, they will create an invoice for the uh, small business for that, you know, say they work two hours and we will through DocuSign make sure that the small business signs off on, yes, they gave me two hours of support. And then um, that invoice through DocuSign would be submitted to the EDC, and then we will pay the bookkeeper for that monthly amount that they um, that they delivered to these small businesses. And then, lastly, uh, really important for everyone to recognize that is interested in the program that they will have to pay all business and income taxes on the stipends and the revenues they receive. So any questions in that space? Okay, not hearing any. Um, yeah, we had a, we so far had a huge demand for the bookkeeper program, uh, 234 applications for 20 slots so far, 104 have been from Clallam County, 114 from Grays Harbor, and so far uh, 16 from Jefferson County. I don't think Jefferson's had the opportunity to get it out the message out as much. So I expect that number will go up quite a bit. Um, and so far, and this, I'd really like to get your help with this. Uh, uh, there have been 22 small business applications and we in the grant have proposed we between the three counties, we would help uh, 250 
businesses or 250 service interventions. So a service intervention, maybe they want um, legal support. Uh, or we, we determine we will give them legal support, but no marketing or bookkeeping. That would be one service intervention. If a, uh, if a business receives both legal and marketing and bookkeeping, that would be three service interventions. So um, the, I saw a question in the chat from Paula, how are the businesses that want to work with bookkeeping intern identified? We, in the, in the business application, uh, we have asked, are you interested in these services? And uh, they identify if they are interested in, um, in, you know, content development, or if they're interested in getting a, a website, a simple website, or, you know, if they're interested in becoming, getting, converting to an LLC, that kind of thing. So they're giving us input through the um, application forms. And so because there's been such a big demand for, um, for the bookkeeping, uh, we, and we know from existing bookkeepers, uh, businesses that they'd like to hire um, some bookkeepers, additional bookkeepers to work for them and there aren't enough to go around. Um, we are considering reallocating what we initially intended. And so we're working with the Department on Commerce on that. They've said we can allocate it how we want, um, but putting more money towards the bookkeeping program so we can increase the number of bookkeepers from say 20 to maybe 30 or 35. But that means we have to reduce the amount of uh, contract support that we would provide to the legal and marketing piece of it. So far, it's been bookkeeping from our business applicants, but again, we've only had 22 so far. It looks like um, the biggest demand is in bookkeeping. The second biggest demand is in marketing. And the third is biggest area would be legal support. So anyway, we are going to have a meeting about that tomorrow and um, with our team and decide how we will reallocate funds. And if you have any input there, um, uh, let me know. So I see Patricia says, uh, don't understand the stipend. They don't have to pay for this education and certification, plus you're paying them to take the course. So we, while they take the course, um, if like we are providing them a stipend while they would be taking the course. Um, and then um, once they, starting in April, they would be uh, receiving, a, we anticipate that the stipend would go down or maybe even eliminate it. Again, we're having the meeting about this tomorrow, trying to reallocate funds, but um, we would, at, at that point, then they would be receiving the hourly amount. But um, so, and I don't know, Susie or, um, or Brian, if you want to add any information about this, but we're really trying to target the most underserved and the most at risk. And so um, Susie, I see you're off mute. Go ahead and share yeah, what you're I was doing. just writing something in chat. So these folks are going to be in school full time from January through early June. And so uh, the thousand dollars is to help pay supp supplement some of their living expenses because they might have to reduce the hours that they were working if they were working a minimum wage job, for example. Um, it's just it's not going to pay for everything for their living expenses, but it's just a little bit of a boost. Yes. So um, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, we've got, um, here's timeline. Um, we are, again, RFP is going out this month and the bookkeeping selection has to occur this month as well because uh, we need to get that kicked off in January. And um, so bookkeeping classes will go January to May 31st and legal and marketing services again, January May to May 31st. 
and uh, the bookkeeping services will be April and May that uh, will where they're out in the field and um, helping helping these businesses. And back to that bookkeeper question, you know, there's a lot of single moms and that kind of thing that would love to be able to take these online classes while and so not have to put their kids in daycare and um, and so and then this would give them a lot more flexibility and maybe they want to be their own entrepreneur or maybe after the end of this program they decide no I'd really like to go work for an existing accounting service so if you have an interest in hiring any bookkeepers, please let us know. Um, we'll put, uh, we'll make sure that Rob Deku, who's teaching the courses or Mia, those folks all know about that and they could make those introductions for you to, uh, um, from the students that are taking these courses. So I think that might be the last slide. Is that right, Lori? That is correct. Okay, so we'll stop sharing. Okay, so any questions or input from anybody? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So Paula, are the courses synchronous or non-synchronous? I'll let <clears throat> currently, and if Rob's on the call, he can correct me, but I believe they are currently asynchronous, but we're, um, looking for added extra like bonus time that we can add to the students that they're looking for some human connection whether that's a synchronous online time where everyone meets up or maybe some face to face and i don't know so the other question in the chat was what time they are so if they're asynchronous you tune in whenever you want the lectures are pre-recorded yeah uh we got looks like some more questions in the chat and go ahead and take yourself off mute if you'd like um and so lena great question will the stipend be a, tied to attendance yes it absolutely will they are going to have to allow the college to send us directly an attendance report and if they've attended all the courses and done everything they're supposed to do then we will go ahead and and um apply for the stipend amount from commerce and then pay them. And uh, let's see, Kelly has a question. What type time are the bookkeeping classes for students who are working during the day? Will they be able to maintain their day job? So that I think ties back to the asynchronous question. Um, so uh, Susie or Brian? Do you want to answer, talk a little yeah, bit more about that? Asynchronous means that the videos are pre-recorded and the students can tune into their school at any time of the day or night, and all the course materials will be there. They engage in um, online discussion groups, so uh, there is a dialogue back and forth with the faculty and the students, but it happens at all hours of the day and night. That's great. <laughs> And Mike, you want to come off mute and talk about your idea there? It's a good one. Well, I was just thinking that some of these folks going through the bookkeeping training when they come out um, and want to start their bookkeeping business, those are kind of like our clients, right? You know, single right. sole proprietor, micro enterprises. Um, if they are otherwise in our mission, we'd love to have them take our course and get support from Micah and Rick and you know, make sure that they're getting the technical assistance and, and business advice that they need to, to grow their business. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. I would love it if you guys could create a program specifically for them um, and then also offer the one-on-one -on -one support. Um, and then because I know that's part of your SBA program, you know, funding and, um, and it's completely aligned with mm -hmm. what your, um, what you do. So yeah, and Mike, uh, Mike has a CP, you know, he's a, I don't think he's a CPA, but he's an, yep. he's an accountant. So he would uh, be a good person to put together the right kind of curriculum for that right. group. Mm -hmm. And right. Mike, I'm sure Rob Deku would welcome you or other folks to come as guest speakers in the classes. That'd um, be awesome. To kind of talk about what's the next step for them. So we're not just throwing them out there into the unknown working world. Better yet, we could embed our course in your class. 
Great. <laughs> okay, we'll talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, um, Debbie, you got a great point there. Um, have you contacted CPAs in town that could encourage the applicants to extend their education after the initial period? That's, Susie, you wanna speak to that? I don't know if that's been done, but it's a great idea. Um, I can't speak for Rob, but every fact member I know loves having guest speakers come in. Um, so I think it'd be a great opportunity for students to hear about what career opportunities are there. Yeah, Lena, I'd love for you to come on and Debbie, you too, to talk about the opportunities and, and again, like try to connect these bookkeepers with your business, because some are not going to want to be their own entrepreneur. That's, you know, that's a certain personality type, right? That's daunting, that's scary. And it, there's a whole lot less risk if you're an employee. And so if you know, you're know you willing to hire somebody and you can talk about what that would look like, I'm sure you'd have a large group of you know really interested people. Colleen, I've always, you know, in any job that I ever had, whether it be working at Walmart, or you know my own business. I have always had the philosophy of of training my replacement. That that's the mindset I always got into, and you know, and that's what you know. Lena's pretty young, but you know, here I am <laughs> approaching seventy. You know, and I'm looking for a replacement because um, I would like to retire. Um, but what I think. Part of the detriment of this program that I'm seeing um, is that you're paying those interns $50 an hour for their pay. If they choose not to be their own entrepreneur, that is an unrealistic wage for a bookkeeping sure. firm to have to pay per hour. So I think you're setting them up for failure. Well, um, as far as a mindset. Um, so I understand that. that. Yeah, I understand that point. And that's why I said they need to understand they have to pay taxes um, on that amount. So, and what's all the overhead? You know, 50 bucks an hour is the, the, the top line revenue, but then you've got expenses. So, you know, I'd like to hear from you guys if you owned your own business and that you're charging that, what do you, what's your actually actual equivalent hourly take-home pay? Uh, I'd like to uh, help with that a little bit. I've been self-employed for over 40 years continuously in Clallam County, and um, there, there's certain things that you can uh, assume broadly when you're self-employed, which is <clears throat> if you're keeping, <clears throat> excuse me, 50% uh, of your uh, top line revenue, you're doing really well. And um, uh, a lot of times, since this is, uh, you know, an underserved county or, or chronically um, challenged financially, it could be very well less than that. So it sounds to me like paying them $50 an hour and then forcing them, well, not forcing them, um, uh, having the requirement of having to keep track of all that stuff and then look at what they're left with. Mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, even money as to whether they'd make more as an employee or as a startup. Mm -hmm. uh, Lena, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to add to that would be, um, I'm assuming they're going to be receiving the $50 an hour for the, the services provided. So if they worked for, for two hours, let's say, how much time did they really put in to, 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 to make that two hour billable time happen? Like, do they drive to the clients? Were they getting paid for the time of driving, which normally in the industry, that's not, I would say that that's not standard for this type of, for this type of position. And I don't really know what the going rate is for a bookkeeper that would be in, in this type of, of, uh, bookkeeping services. So I don't think receiving $50 an hour for bookkeeping services provided for a sole proprietor is terribly high, but I agree with, with Debbie's point that uh, I think, you know, my perspective is you, you probably received a lot of applications because people are thinking they're going to get $50 an hour right. as like an employee. Yeah. yeah. And so mm -hmm. I don't know that the applicants have a realistic 
idea of what right. that means to them. And so I, I know that with your application process and, and you know, when you're filtering through and, and selecting proper candidates, that'll be something that you that you discuss. But yeah. um, I think that um, it, it'll be interesting to see. I'm super excited about this program. Um, I am really looking forward to how it comes out. And I know that it's been, um, you know, as we've talked about, now it's kind of like go time. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of things that have to get done to pull it all together with the time frame um, design. So it'll be it'll be exciting to see how how things end up. Um, so, yep. You know, um, also I need to add. I see Bill Plumley is on with us. He did have his camera on for a while. Bill. Are you there? So um, Bill is with, he might've walked away. Bill is with Serenity House or the West End Resource Center. There he is. Hi, Bill. And he Hi. also is fluent in Spanish. And he has a lot of contacts with the underserved Hispanic community in, in the Forks area. And so Bill and Serenity House is a partner of ours. They're going to be doing specific outreach and provide some translation services. So, um, and uh, so Bill, do you wanna share kind of what, and more so I think is for the um, business end of things, not so much the bookkeeper because I don't think the college has the capacity to provide bookkeeping classes in Spanish. Um, so, however, uh, if we, it would be great if we found some bookkeepers that were bilingual, and then we would try to match up those, um, the bilingual bookkeepers with the businesses that maybe the business owners that maybe only speak Spanish. And so they could be a bookkeeper for them. So if you know of anyone that's bilingual that uh, would like to be a bookkeeper, that's something we're really going to try to find and pursue that if possible. Yes, Bill. Good. I, I just want to say there's, um, I think um, if I can quote Dr. Martin Luther King, I have a dream. Uh, I see many children, <clears throat> pardon me. I see many children growing up in trilingual homes because in school they speak English and their social language is Spanish. And many of them speak either mom, canjobal, mixteco, or tarasco at home with their parents and siblings. So they have a conversant level at least in those languages. So what will happen as an interpreter, many times I'm called and I never ask people uh, because to me, it would be patently offensive to ask, can you read? Um, there's, a, there's an assumption that people who speak Spanish can't read, but that's not at all true in general. There are those who don't read. But the way I address that is I say, we've got these forms they need to have you fill out, be it at the doctor's office or be it at DSHS or be it for housing yeah. assistance, whatever the venue is. And I let them know that there's a lot of paperwork and I'd be glad to help them with it. And if they don't read, then they will voluntarily state, thank you, because I don't read, but I don't ask them that question. So mm -hmm. that is part of the stage setting that lies on us to set the welcoming atmosphere for folks. Because if you first, when you when you first open up the I conversation, you ask enough. an offensive. Oh. Sorry, go right ahead, okay. keep on going, Bill. Okay, so it, it just makes makes things smoother when, mm -hmm. when people feel like they have more of a buy-in and more of a voice if they have that measure of control. So then they'll be more willing to go along with whatever you need. Like if DSHS has a lot of questions they've got to ask or um, I've also worked with the school and it's a sim similar thing. Okay. But the children coming up, I believe if they have an aptitude like to do a senior project, uh, they would have a great edge in the workforce after school if they are simply bilingual or trilingual. I mean, mm -hmm. what store wouldn't wanna hire them for a clerk if they can serve all their clientele in a more efficient way? 
-hmm. So that's something I'd like to see happen. More opportunities yeah. for right. seniors coming up. Great. Yeah. So Bill, if you'll stay on afterwards, love to chat some more with you. So I, I do um, have a nine o'clock appointment, so okay. I can be on until then. So okay. Um. Yeah. Great tip. So Lori put in the chat the links to the bookkeeper application where we have again 224 applications so far and then also the olympic peninsula small business boost where we don't have enough applicants at all so if you have a small business you know of a small business for-profit business you know they don't have to have any employees but that need would like a website or some marketing support or legal support or um and then lastly, uh, if they'd like to get some bookkeeping services, uh, please share that link with them and get them to apply. The deadline to apply for the bookkeeping, the bookkeeping uh, application is, it's going to be pretty soon because we've got such overwhelming um, demand and we may close that earlier than we had planned, but the, uh, the business application is at the end of this month. Um, so thanks, Bill, for the tip. Um, and we will, um, anyway, are, are there any other questions about the program? And it is, you know, we, we've responded as quickly as we can to this. It's been a mad rush. Uh, the, the legislature, um, decided to fund the program in March of 2022. And then the application came out in the end of August. Um, and we applied right away. Um, and then we were notified in November. So last month, and we've been putting together our response. And here we are, December 7th, um, trying to kick off the program even before we have our final contract with Commerce, because if we wait for that, then I don't think we'll ever get it done in time. But does anybody have any other thoughts or questions? Thanks, Patricia. All right. Um, oh, I think I saw something. Mike, you wrote, have you selected the marketing firms? No, we have not. We haven't even published the RFP yet. So we're working, we're trying to agree on the terms of the RFP. And again, this is delivery based. So um, if you were going to help a business create content de development, you know, it's not hourly, it is how much would you charge for that? And if you're gonna help them create a 90 second video and we'll specify what we want so that you can respond with, this is what I would charge to create a 90 second video. And that would mean you go to them and you, you know, or they come to you, however that's going to work. Um, but that how much would you charge to do that? And then we'll identify, um, you know, match up the businesses with that. But first we have to figure out the service providers. Um, yeah. And another opportunity for CIE graduates. Yep. So um, I think, Mike, it would really be terrific for you to work with these bookkeepers and also the the small businesses that we identify that might like a little more support so okay well that's all i've got everyone um uh thank you so Colleen, much Colleen. i just i just yes. want to this is mike i just i i did something similar to this at highline community college where we got um uh, second year uh, business students to do accounting work for our clients bookkeeping and accounting work and it required a, a fair amount of um, oversight. You know, um, you get what you kind of get what you pay for. And if they're not experienced, they're putting numbers all over the place in QuickBooks. And um, there was a fair amount of, you know, having to go back with a with an experienced bookkeeper and kind of fix things. So mm -hmm. um, just just to put it out there that this might be an an issue for uptake on the side of the businesses that might want to participate yep yeah but we're we're not looking at really complex businesses either that we would match them up with uh -huh. um you know it's pretty simple things and uh -huh. um yeah we you know if there may be more funding for this and it may be that we hire 
um, and my in initial intention was to do an RFP for bookkeepers, but you know, the response was don't have the bandwidth, trying to hire people and can't. So maybe it's that uh, we add another layer of support where someone would you know, do that full time, be helping all these bookkeepers. And the, I think it's gonna be so important to get the account set up correctly and get everything set up. And that's something that Rob Deku and, and Susie's team and Grace Harvard College's team will be um, very involved with. One idea might be to have some of the more advanced accounting students as, you know, work with these bookkeeper trainees as part of their program, would they be able to um, earn credits or do something as part of their program to help review the data entry from the, the students in the bookkeeper program? And that's why I think it's so important you get in touch with the CPAs because, I mean, they're going to train um, the people in getting everything ready for the tax returns. A lot of bookkeepers don't do taxes. Um, we, we turn them over to a CPA. It's IRS but, tends to yeah. look the other way when a CPA has signed off on it, not just a bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so this to me is not taxes. This, you know, this is just I so know, they can have a profit yeah, loss, they're, they're cash flow, taxes. balance sheet. They're not taxes, Colleen, but if you don't create the books correctly, mm -hmm. then the CPA has to spend hours and hours and hours trying to tie everything out and analyze it to make sure you've paid the right B&Os, to make sure you reported yep. all your income, all sure. that kind of stuff. And that's at $200 an hour, where mm -hmm. if the bookkeeper does their job correctly and has everything tied out when they turn those files over to the CPA to do the tax return, man, it's a slam dunk. And it costs mm -hmm. the, the businesses less money. Mm -hmm. Having to go back and do a forensic audit basically on a company that has gotten their books so screwed up takes hours and hours and hours of time that they that book most bookkeepers don't get paid for. Yeah. The well, so can't afford it. So understand these are going to be businesses that have been in existence. These aren't necessarily startup business and they're those businesses that have been handing their um, CPA or doing their own taxes and here's my box of receipts so it's getting them more organized than they were but it's not really complicated businesses you know we I recognize we recognize the complexity of many businesses and that's not who we're going to initially set these bookkeepers up with. Are you going to, uh, like under the businesses that are selected, <coughs> are you going to offer them a QuickBooks course? Because I have several clients that only use QuickBooks to do their invoices. They don't run their bank account through it. They don't run you know, their expenses through it. They're just using it to invoice because they don't understand their business enough to yeah, we that. don't have funding to do that. Maybe that could be a follow-on program, but no, that is not part of this grant program. Well, and I think, you know, the, the whole idea behind this program is to get somebody doing, training people to be bookkeepers so that they can assist businesses. There's going to be hiccups. There's, it takes time to learn things. I mean, in, in my office, it takes three to four months just to get somebody knowledgeable enough to, you know, be able to do all of the monthly tasks that need to happen. And so everything is about taxes and everything needs to be accounted for from a tax perspective, but you got to start somewhere. And I'm really excited to see how it goes. And ultimately for the business, they're not paying for any of these services yet. Um, but hopefully the idea would be that we would have bookkeepers that could continue working on things, but there's gonna have to be partnerships. I like the idea of having one of the more advanced students reviewing the information, although I don't know that that's really gonna be super useful either based on the hires that I've had that do or don't have bookkeeping and accounting um, uh, experience at the college level. So um, I'm super excited to see how it works out. I think it's gonna be a win-win 
Um, and the only way that we're going to know is to to implement the program and then do the follow up, as Paula has um, said in the in the comments, you know, we need to have some sort of way to track whether this is work, the system is working. And with any kind of new program, there's going to be hiccups and there's going to be tweaks mm -hmm. and, you know, things are going to have to evolve over time. But mm -hmm. it'll it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, absolutely. And Debbie, I'm, I'm, I agree with all of your comments. Like I agree with everything that you've said. Those are concerns that I have too. Um, <clears throat> but it'll be interesting to see how it works. And and I think if we don't do it, we've got exactly what we have. So yeah, there will be issues. And you know, I I tell our operations manager Peggy, who does a fabulous job. She's gotten us through um, full audits without any findings or management letters. But you know, if she does a thousand entries and screws up three entries, it's going to show up. I'm going to see it. You know, no, we don't have you know a ten thousand dollars of um, insurance expense this month, and so those things pop up. And um, but it's still an A plus. You know, she's doing fabulous. But yeah, there are going to be errors, and I just think getting people into this program is what's so important. Um, but like you just said, it jumps out to someone like you who has a knowledge of their books. <laughs> well, and again, the college is going to be providing technical assistance to these bookkeepers that are supporting the different businesses. So it's there's going to be a lot of work, you know, in April, especially. And I think it may very well be that some like Peggy could be out there helping and adding a bit more support as well. So with that, guys, I am going to call it a morning. Thank you, Bill, for joining us. Um, and I will give you a call later on. Uh, thank you thank so you. much for joining mm -hmm. us today. And we will um, 